find America's top theatrical talents on the cross streets of Broadway and Maine. Gentleman's Guide to Love and Murder is a nonstop roller coaster of laughs. You start with, you know, this kind of beautifully naive man, and you watch him transform into a mass murderer. I'm afraid I shall need your hand. Eh? Of course, my lord. Foolish <laughs> to think I could let him fall. Normally, you don't think mass murder and fun, but it's it's a lot of fun. Yes, today I was Montague Navarro. Navarro. His mother was disinherited because she'd married for love and not for the money and the property and the prestige that came with her name. His mother was a bit of an embarrassment. Water under the bridge, of course. He starts unveiling why he was excommunicated from the family. He starts uh, ninth in line to the earldom, and then by the end of the show, he becomes Earl. Let's say, may I walk my in your muck. <laughs> I play the Dice with families. I think the fact that I play all the characters that die, that kind of helps the audience go, oh, we're gonna have fun with this. The hearts and tots and piggies made of us, but even they are part of God's desire. There are three things for me that really help imbue the character. The voice, the walking, and then third, uh, the costume. Have you tried yogurt culture? Delicious, and a natural laxative as well. <laughs> Sean, my amazing co-star, is so good at just being the straight man and serving up the laugh and letting me kind of hit it. As if you could ever be an Earl, eight people would have to die for that to happen. How likely is that? The character I play is Sibella, and she and Monty have been friends since they were children, but as they've grown up, they've developed more of an adult affection for each other. I love I've decided to marry you. I, I just think it's so clever. I think it's so cleverly staged and written and you, you get such a great audience reaction from it. I decided to marry you. I decided to marry you. I decided the Henry's gone, that life was on for me. I play Phoebe Dyswith. She lives in the country. She's a little bit naive. Um, she is a member of the Dyswith family. However, she is not in line um, for the succession. But she has a really fantastic character arc because by the end of the show, you realize that she's not stupid or vapid. That horrible woman, this is one, do not utter her name. The show twice on Broadway. It's a tricky show because it's it's heady and it's wordy, but I think that presents a really fun, interesting challenge. And I think it's fun to be able to bring a new show to people. Till death do us part, darling. It's what I cling to, my sweet. <laughs> the piece lends itself to kind of uh, an outlandish comedic take. And I kind of liken it to a combination between Monty Python, Mystery of Edwin Drood, or Jekyll and Hyde almost. So put those three together and you kind of get Gentleman's Guy. Oh, what all the dice with dying? What a tasteless way of showing off. 